Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Drums and Drams. My name's Cameron, and today I'm gonna to be taking a look at the brand new Knob Creek 10-Year Rye Whiskey, bottled at 100 proof or 50% ABV. And if you find this at SRP, it should run you about 70 bucks. Now, I picked this bottle up about a week ago here in the state of Ohio. And if you happen to know anything about the way liquor sales work in Ohio, you'll know that we have a state-run liquor agency. And while many states have state minimum pricing, we actually have state mandated pricing, meaning it is the same across the board, no matter which store you go to in Columbus, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Dayton, everything is going to cost the exact same. There's zero fluctuation. And that's typically a good thing for us because we get things at or at least very, very close to SRP, but we end up dealing with super long lines on truck delivery days, two to eight plus hours every week to try to get your hands on the latest, you know, bottle from Buffalo Trace or whatever, one bottle out of six. To me, the juice is never worth the squeeze in that case, even though we are getting bottles at SRP. So I pay the upcharges online, I get things you know, delivered to my house other ways. And that's the way I'm able to do reviews on those allocated products. The reason I'm saying all this is because I walked into my local liquor store and this was just sitting on the shelf like six hours after the truck had delivered everything. All the allocated stuff had been picked over. The line had already happened. There was at least like a case, if not two cases of this just sitting on the shelf, 70 bucks SRP. It was like hitting the lottery for me. So I walked out with one of these Knob Creek 10s and I've been very excited ever since. So that's the setup. Let me know if you guys are seeing this product in your market. Let me know if this is actually an allocated product in your area or if it's also kind of sitting where you are. Let's go to the nose now and see what we get. Here we go. All right, so the nose of this whiskey is very balanced. It's got a little bit of everything going on here. There's an elevated spice component for sure, but as is the case with many Jim Beam and Knob Creek ryes, this does not really feel like a rye. So you do get this elevated spice. In this case, it's like a a white and black pepper, some good oak spice on the top. But there's not a lot of herbal qualities or dill or anything like that, no anise. It's more of just these approachable, uh, almost bourbon-like rye spices. Some clove in here, some kind of sweet cinnamon as well. Yeah, and just below that, you do get a little bit of a citrus quality to the whiskey, but it's not a bright, sharp, acidic citrus. It's more like a sweet citrus, like a, like a lemon cake of some sort. Underneath that lemony kind of note, there is th this backbone of the whiskey, which is what I would refer to as like a boozy caramel sauce note. I love this quality. For this being only 100 proof whiskey, it does have a lot of great body to it on the nose. Maybe a tinge of a peanut note in here, but by and large, when I think about other Knob Creek products and how much nuttiness those can have, this is on the lower end of the spectrum, at least on the nose for me. There is a little bit of a ginger note in here too. And then finally on the on the very kind of bottom end of the whiskey, it does show its age. There's a really nice Rick House kind of oak. If you've ever been down to the, the Bourbon Trail and walked into a Rick House, you'll know what I'm talking about. When that smell first hits you in the face, it's, it's like heaven on earth. And if you haven't had that experience, get down to the trail or just any local distillery and get a chance to go in the Rick House. You'll know what I'm talking about. So. By and large, the nose is really nice to this whiskey. It's very balanced. Again, elevated spice lets you know it's a rye, but in the best of ways, I would say, without any of the abrasiveness that can sometimes come with that. But I guess the last thing I should say about the nose is that it's not standing out to me as some sort of like highly allocated limited edition product. And maybe that's the point. Maybe that's why there was a case or two cases sitting on the shelf in my store here in Ohio. Maybe it's not meant to be that. Maybe it's just meant to be a really solid $70 product. That's the way it comes off on the nose. Let's go to the palate now and see what we get. Cheers. All right, so this is a very mouthwatering whiskey on the palate. It's really spicy. It's a lingering. It's got a great long finish. First impression is that this is just a standout product. Again, not in a limited edition kind of way, but in, in an elevated daily sipper kind of way. Many folks are in that $20 to $40 price range when it comes to their kind of daily sipper options. This at 70 is probably out of that price range unless you you know, unless you're used to spending more money on whiskey, this could be your daily sipper. To me, this is somewhere somewhere between the daily sipper and the special occasion Friday night pour. So it kind of bridges that gap. If you're looking for something in that middle ground, this would be a fantastic option. It's not a bruiser. You know, it does have gri gripping spice and intensity to it. A little bit of menthol actually coming out in the finish right now, but it's not like, it's not gonna rip your face off like an Elijah Craig Barrel Proof would, which is gonna be at a similar price point to this. So. First impression on the palate is that this really does follow the nose. The balance is there. There's a little more nuttiness on the palate than there was on the nose. There is certainly an intensity to this whiskey. Like it's, again, I said mouthwatering and I'm saying that because it grips your palate and it's got a lot of spice to it. So it does get a little spicier and a little nuttier on the palate. 
but it still maintains this great balance and, and a lot of these kind of like darker and richer characteristics to the whiskey. So I think this is really nice stuff. It's not special, but it's damn good. I appreciate it for that. Let's do one more sip and then we'll wrap this up. Just fantastic stuff. As you continue to sip this whiskey, you're able to get a little bit more into that boozy caramel sauce note that I talked about from the nose. That ginger is starting to pop out just a little bit more. And there's also kind of an earthiness that's starting to, you know, kind of come into come into focus here. I would I would say it's some sort of earthiness or maybe like even a pencil shaving note that I'm starting to pick up on. So it's evolving a little bit as I as I sit with it. It's got a pretty decent amount of complexity. Seventy dollar bottle, ten year age stated rye from Jim Beam Knob Creek. Highly recommend. I can't say it enough. If you're a bourbon lover, this is going to be for you. If you're a rye lover. I think it's going to be for you. I think it's going to be pretty much for, I don't, it's going to be for everybody. I don't think anybody's not going to like this unless you despise nutty whiskey. If you just typically don't like Knob Creek or Jim Beam profiles, you might not be into this whiskey, but otherwise, as long as you're not looking for a rye that is going to be dill forward and herbal and anise forward, then I think you're going to like this whiskey. I think it's an easy pickup at 70 bucks. So snag one. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Like, comment, subscribe, check out the Patreon for some barrel picks, exclusive content, all that good stuff. Cheers, and I'll see you next time here on Drums and Drams.